a life of discipleship that I know I needed at that time. So in a way God had to make all the running in our relationship, every part of it. Once I began my career, I didn't attend church at all. I worked on Sundays from choice and I pushed aside a lot of my Christian friends. And it took God several jobs, uh, hundreds of miles, and thousands, perhaps, of his moments to drag me back to him and his church. Now, he used many people to do this. My husband, many, many good Christian friends, and one minister in particular. And I think that each one of these was his God moment tool, if you like. I believe that miracles and God moments don't always happen in a single explosive experience. For me, they came as a series of smaller but equally significant moments of grace from God, which accumulated really into a stream of, of life and love from him. The miracle, I think, is that God has never given up on me. Despite my neglect of him, my carelessness about our relationship, um, my determination to do things my way, he has never given up on me. I know, too, that many times I've, I've been slow to acknowledge the blessings that God has given me because I didn't just didn't understand that God was in every one of those moments. And all of this really just reminds me that God is always with me. He was always there before me, in fact, and he's always working on the next, his next God moment for me. Well, um... From my perspective as a member of one of the Oakhampton churches, I see it as crucial that we find even more ways, really, of working together as CTO. And also finding more ways of learning about each other, um, because I found it necessary to answer questions that are posed by members of our community, some of which I just can't answer. I think we probably need to offer a united face of faith more often and this festival of faith of course is a good means of doing that having said that though people have been asking me what it's all about and I haven't had adequate information to tell them so I think there's information sharing learning about each other that needs to happen as well from the perspective of the non-Christians in the town, I think it's really important that they clearly see the churches working together. And I think that's why Healing Oakhampton is so key in being visible on the streets for everyone to see. Hopefully, uh, the townsfolk don't even think about which church or which denomination we come from. They just see us working there, the street team, open for everyone, just chatting and then he praying for healing. When I was about uh, six in younger times, um, mum and dad used to have some hard times and some really hard uh, arguments. And I can remember falling asleep one night praying that God would just keep them together. Uh, and my heart was really aching. And, uh, well, he gave me peace and, uh, and I fell asleep that way. And they actually were together uh, for their golden wedding anniversary. Um, and then during my early teens, I was very, very, um, well, some would say suicidal because I did actually get to the point where I was thinking um, along those lines. But whether I would have or no, um, you or I know, uh, knows that, God himself knows, but I was brought into the situation at that time where I was, it was flying through my mind. And I came into a group of Christians who were down here on track from uh, Kelly College, a Christian college, and um, 
I went into the room solely to disrupt and to let them know what I thought of Christians. And I took one step inside the door and a lad from the other end seen me come down through beaming and I was well and truly drunk as I usually was, even though I weren't old enough. And God met me there and then and started to speak. And three nights later, I was lying on my bed and I said that, Lord, I'd rather go to hell than I would take your name upon my lips and dishonour your name. And I then followed by saying, but if you want me, then you come and you sort me. And there and then I went through every conceivable emotion that we go through. Fear, joy, um, the whole of them. And right at the end, I felt as if my body literally lifted off the bed and I was literally shaken like a dog would shake a toy. And I felt as if I was literally thrown back onto the bed and I said, he has done it, he hasn't, he has, he hasn't, he has. And I fell asleep without going through my mind. And I woke up in the morning and I knew that something had changed within me. And I've never been the same since. And various times down through, um, where I've had fear at the dentist and I prayed about it. And the dentist was more feared of me than I had fear of him because he, he asked me five or six times through the course of sorting my teeth out and, and taking them out, if I was all right. And even though I could feel tension, the peace and the tranquility that was there came to it and he was really worried about it. But I was absolutely fine. And up to nearer uh, times, um, when my older sister and my mother passed away, um, a few years apart from each other, um, the peace that I had, um, I don't know that it was a real grieving. Um, it was a, a real numbness rather than anything else, but I was at peace and completely in control. Um, and again, I, I thought about the times that um, you know, God had touched me down through Well, uh, again, um, there's a lot uh, that they need to do to be uh, joined and linked together. I, I think there's still some uh, things there that uh, we have, um, shall we say, from ancient times that are still being sorted out. But I do believe God is really moving in through Christians together and we need to have our ears and our eyes open no, and, our, and our spiritual ears and eyes and I, I believe that we need to be able to get down and uh, recognise and discern uh, what the real needs in the community are, looking after those that are uh, that are bereaved, um, those that have um, got deep illnesses, uh, those that are poor, that are really struggling financially and uh, in that social area as well as in the spiritual area to lift them up. I grew up uh, in a Christian home sort of thing and knew the Bible and knew lots of things and, and uh, learned a lot of it by heart and whatnot. And that's a part of my early background. And then sort of I, I drifted away and, and got into things that I shouldn't have been involved in, lots of seriously things that were quite dreadful and whatnot. And then on one occasion, I was planning to do something and much the same as the Apostle Paul. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ sort of said, 
so far and no further. And they appeared and said, that's enough. And took, took me to bits and had me on my knees, crying my eyes out, realizing that there was a God and that Jesus did exist. And that I couldn't go and do the things that I wanted to do. It was his will and he died to save me from my sin. He paid a price at Calvary for me to be redeemed. And that night was a horrendous experience for me. For hours he dealt with me at the cross and I realised that he is God and that he does exist and that he is eternal. And one day everybody will stand before him, everybody will bow a knee. And it's a great privilege in this life to be able to, to bow the knee to Jesus, who is God's only precious and loving son. Yeah, certainly. I've not, I've not got a sort of great experience of the church together, but uh, it's a good idea. You know, Jesus is the saviour of all mankind, not only in Elkhampton, but the whole world. God says, I sent my son because he loves all the sinners in the world. And you know, it's the same message, you need to repent. And as long as the churches teach that message, that they, they need to repent from their sin, and accept Jesus as their saviour, then, you know, it's a good thing that the churches work together and tell the same message. I'm what's often referred to as a cradle Catholic. I was baptised into the church at two weeks old. I made my first communion at six and I was confirmed at seven, which was common practice in the 1940s, even though I didn't know what on earth I was doing. I was taken to Mass every Sunday and Holy Day, and as I was educated throughout my school days by nuns, my teenage years being spent in a Catholic boarding school, I was kept very much on the straight and narrow, sometimes under pain of quite severe temporal punishment, let alone spiritual guilt. It was Mass at 7am in the chapel most mornings, prayers or benediction every evening, and each day punctuated several times by the saying of the Angelus. And I love most of it, the prayers and the lovely hymns, the quiet and the peace of the school chapel, the orderliness, but the asking of questions about Christianity was frowned upon. It was as if the nuns were afraid that they wouldn't know the answers to our adolescent questions. It wasn't until much later that I realised they were probably too embarrassed by many of them. In the sixth form, for instance, we had social education every Friday afternoon, but I can never recall the word sex being mentioned, let alone discussed, how things have changed. When I left school, I went straight to Drama College in London, where my eyes were opened very wide, very quickly, to very different people with very different values from my own. And I have to admit that for a time, my Christian faith was put on the back burner, not forgotten, but less important than it had been. It wasn't really until I married that I thought seriously about my spiritual welfare again. My husband was not a Catholic, but he had strong Christian values and supported me in bringing up our children as such. Then I began to teach in a Catholic primary school and I found that sharing my belief with the children and discussing my doubts and concerns with other teachers and clergy served to strengthen and confirm my own faith. I also began to be aware of the school and the larger parish community as being like a family. We might have disagreements and opposing views about many things, but as in any large loving family, there was always support and understanding of one's frailties and encouragement of one's abilities. Also, the realisation that no matter what the difficulties, one was not alone. My husband and I returned to Oakhampton in 2007 after a time away, thinking we would have many years together to enjoy our retirement, but this wasn't to be. The following year, David was diagnosed with jaw cancer and underwent many operations. Then when he was finally in remission, 
and I was about to have both my hips replaced, I too got lymphoma. It was a dreadful time, and I railed at God about the unfairness of the situation. But family, friends, and the St Boniface parish community helped and supported us immensely. Gradually I recovered my health, but sadly my husband's cancer returned and he died last year. However, I know that he was greatly appreciative of the prayers offered for us both, and the many visits and messages received, and particularly for the friendship and counsel of our parish priest. We had been happily married for 52 years, and I don't think I would have coped with his loss as well as I have without the fellowship of the Christian community here in Oakhampton. Knowing that we are all a part of the loving family of God gives me strength and comfort every day, as does my belief that if we do our best for God, which was my school motto, we will each rise again to everlasting life, as he promised. I think Oakhampton itself is a very friendly town and there is more Christian communication than I have been used to in many larger towns and the churches seem to work very very well together and have a great friendship among their congregations. My own personal experiences have been over the past 50 years in the parish of Oakhampton. It's, very, it's, it's really started when I first started going when I was just a youngster back in the 60s. I feel all the way through, it was in being in the Catholic faith has been in a way, a traditional way of sharing your faith and also a very loving way because um, we all seem to get to be together with our faith in Jesus. I, as, as time went on, as I got older, I did feel that the most important thing in my childhood was my other peers. I think that having young people of your own age around you strengthens your faith and makes you realise that you're not on your own as a Christian. As time progressed, as I grew up as a teenager, my most important memories and happy memories in, throughout all my life has been to be away on church camp with other young Catholics and other young Christians sharing our faith together every year and it's been an experience every year I never forget. I think the faith factor and the fact that we are together as a community is vital um, to keep our faith together and every year over the last, I still have friends from 40 years ago which I still meet and get together and we share lots of happy memories and I feel as, as that time's gone on as a teenager, I've, I really want to take up the role. I felt a calling for doing youth work in the parish and sharing the message of God with young people. And from that, I feel that I strengthened my faith tremendously. God is there for all of us. And I think we've got to share that message with young people from the, from the age of three onwards. We have to share that message that God is there, that he loves us, he cares for us. And more importantly of all, the Holy Spirit is with us all the time. And it's not that though we can't physically see Jesus, that the Holy Spirit, especially at this time of Pentecost, just passing, that the Holy Spirit has come down and he's the most important person to be with us now is the Holy Spirit. And when we pray to God, the Holy Spirit works within us and try to explain to youngsters that our faith is enhanced by the Holy Spirit, that he is work that is working within us in a peaceful way, in a way that we can call for help and that help is given to us. And that's how we react every day in life. I feel the churches of Oakhampton are a very lovely group of people who nobody is self-righteous, everybody, nobody's judgmental. We're all there for each other. And I think that in itself makes us a family.